The Gigabyte Aero 14 is a smaller sized 14 inch laptop that still packs an Intel 6 core CPU and Nvidia 1050 Ti graphics. So let's find out just how well it performs in a few different games. Just quickly before we dig into the benchmark results, I'll cover off the main specs in the laptop. There's an Intel i7-8750H CPU, Nvidia 1050 Ti graphics with 4GB of GDDR5 memory, and a single 16GB stick of DDR4 memory at 2400MHz. So you could probably improve performance a little by running in dual channel or upgrading to faster memory. The Aero 14 has a 1440p 60Hz display. As we're only dealing with the 1050 Ti, most of the benchmarks have been run at 1080p as this makes more sense. But I've also included 1440p results for some of the less demanding titles where it made sense. With that out of the way, let's check out some of the gaming results. Fortnite at 1080p was running quite well. I found it playable at all setting levels, but keep in mind the results will vary quite a lot in this game depending on what other players are doing. Moving up to 1440p it was definitely still playable at the lower settings. Only at Epic did I start having significant issues. Overwatch was tested playing with the bots, even at Epic settings it ran very well as shown by the 1% lows which are above the refresh rate of the panel. Going to 1440p again I only noticed issues at Epic settings. It still worked quite well at all of the setting levels. CSGO was going well at 1080p. This game doesn't really need many resources to work well. Going to 1440p didn't actually drop the frame rates by as much as I expected, but I think realistically most people will stay at 1080p or below if playing competitively anyway. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the built-in benchmark, and even the 1% lows at ultra settings were above the refresh rate of the display, so it runs pretty well. At 1440p the frame rates drop a bit, but the 1% lows don't drop too far behind the averages, so at most settings it should work well too. The rest of the games were tested at 1080p only, as in general their frame rates didn't really seem high enough to justify 1440p. PUBG was tested using the replay feature. As usual the 1% lows are a fair bit below the averages, which seems normal for this game. But of course, take the results with a grain of salt, as like Fortnite it will depend on what's going on in the game, so the results can vary quite a lot. I've tested Far Cry 5 with the built-in benchmark. And the results aren't amazing, but it was still playable at most setting levels without issue. 1% lows aren't too far below the averages. Assassin's Creed Origins was also tested with the built-in benchmark, and again 1% lows aren't too far below the averages here. Dota 2 was tested using a fairly intensive replay, so this should be a worst case scenario. Realistically you'll probably get better results than this while actually playing. And even in this intensive test the averages are looking pretty good for this game. Testing Battlefield 1 in the first campaign mission ran well for me even with ultra settings, no noticeable issues in this one. The Witcher 3 doesn't really need a high frame rate to play, but was a little stuttery at ultra settings, it ran well at all other setting levels though. Rise of the Tomb Raider was tested with the built in benchmark, and were able to average above the refresh rate of the display at medium settings or lower. Ghost Recon is a resource intensive game, and again was tested with the built in benchmark. You'll probably want to play this at lower settings to get a good experience. Watch Dogs 2 is another resource intensive game, but is another that I personally think doesn't need a high frame rate to play. I didn't actually notice any dips below ultra settings. It ran quite well for me at high or below. Doom was tested using Vulcan, and even at max settings we were averaging above the refresh rate of the display. It played well at all setting levels in my testing with no noticeable problems. Shadow of War was another game tested with the built-in benchmark. Medium or lower settings could take us above the refresh rate of the display. Ashes of the Singularity was also tested with the built-in benchmark. As a more demanding game the results weren't too great. I haven't yet tested undervolting or overclocking as this will vary between laptops based on the hardware, but I'll cover those in the full review video, along with detailed temperature testing. This is just how the laptop performs out of the box in games. Which to be honest is probably how most people will probably end up using it. So this is what you can at least expect at a base level. So how do you guys think the Gigabyte Aero 14 laptop did in these games? The 1050 Ti is still a pretty decent mid-range choice and works well with less demanding games at 1080p with fair settings. And we're even able to get acceptable frame rates in some of those games at 1440p too. Although as we've seen in many modern AAA games you might need to either run with lower settings or instead look at something more powerful like 1060 graphics. It all depends on what you're playing and the settings in use, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what to expect with the Aero 14 laptop. 
Let me know what you guys thought down in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for the full review of the Gigabyte Aero 14 laptop, as well as future tech videos like this one.